I'm so happy to be with you guys today. We are, uh, what are we doing? We are going to hold space for a higher frequency, right? We are holding space for something bigger than the linear aspect of our mind. Do you understand what I mean by that? We are holding space for um, and connecting to a, a, a much more real um, existence of the permanent, of, of all that is, you know? There's a way that we've kind of, um, I don't know, contracted our own frequency to connect to the passing things that are going on in the world, right? And then thinking those are it. So for instance, even though the election is a big deal and a legitimate thing, no matter who you're wanting or voting for um, or who you're worried about, whatever, we have to hold space for the higher frequency that whatever happens is perfect, right? Just by being in that space, right? Um, that, that everything is doing what it, it does exactly right. And being in the higher frequency is something that the people here um, really, really, really need to know is probably your best value. And then what, what do I mean by that? That there are some people who have lived in a victim mindset that being um, a you know, forcible activist would be growth for them, right? But if, and so, whatever it is, whether it's fighting for something in a certain situation, yelling on the streets, being active in a certain way, uh, that definitely serves a purpose for so many people and is growth and is needed and very, very, very exciting that they're moving into that. Now, I would imagine if you're on this call um, that you are aware of a frequency that is different than that, that might call to you past that. So I've used this as an example before, but I know someone who was a client and is now also just a very dear friend who um, actively was, uh, you know, protesting things at Capitol buildings and, you know, forcing things and wanting to pass laws and, and realized that there was even an access to a higher version of her. And what she is is also a mother and an amazing loving space. So she kind of graduated from being an activist in that way to being an activist of honoring and owning what the space is uh, that she would like the world to move to, right? So to give you an example, like, you know, we think unless we're out screaming a bunch of stuff, we're not going to change anything. Well, what would happen if there was also a hundred million Mr. Rogers, right? Holding a space of love. Like what would, what would happen to the world if there was, right? Like, uh, do you get what I'm saying? A hundred million listeners, a hundred million uh, patient people, a hundred million helping the people that are feeling stuck in their shit, uh, to, to release that through tears, through love, right? So I just wanna honor that um, activism isn't only screaming with a sign. And if that calls to you, uh, that's fantastic also. But activism is holding the space for what we want. Activism is connecting to what's more true. You know, if it doesn't feel very good, it's not the truth. That's just always the case. It's always perspective that's hurting. It's always perspective. It's never actually um, the circumstance. It's what the circumstance brings up inside. And most of us don't know to look inside. So it's just, I, that person made me mad. I'm going to keep being reactive to that person that made me mad. I'm going to keep pointing at that person, make me mad. Stop making me mad person versus what, what's inside. You know, what's this bringing to me? What's this, what's this teaching me? And what am I supposed to do different? Or, or what am I supposed to be looking at? Right? What, what is this? Um, you know, I used to feel really upset 
if there were people that couldn't hold specific spaces for me. Like I want to talk about something and then they'll defend themselves and I'm trying to get to something that's inside me. And uh, I, I learned that I'm supposed to move to energies that can hold space for me and learn how to hold space for myself versus trying really hard to get someone who doesn't have that space holding ability for themselves to, to hold space for me. It's an actual thing. It's like a corny airy fairy term, but holding space is a big deal. So life goes, I'm going to teach you this lesson over and over and over again until you change your approach and until you, you move differently. I remember sharing the story one time where I injured my neck really, really bad. And I was with my friend Diego and I realized I might need to go to the hospital. And he was about to take me to the hospital. And I said, call my mom. And he was like, why? He goes, why would we call your mom? And I said, because I, I want her to know about what I'm going through and everything like that. And he said, do you want sympathy or do you want to change this? And the amount of times that I didn't realize that I've done something more to get sympathy, which is fine, by the way, if I honor that, uh, then actually change it, right? So then instead of calling my mom and me being someone who actually would need to be injured <laughs> so that I can get love, right? Like I actually associated, call mom, I'm hurt. I get love for being injured. When I do something incredible, I don't feel that same love from her. I feel love from different energies, right? So isn't that amazing? Like that's a lesson for me. How many moves do I make to get sympathy? <clears throat> and then if I wanna change it, I gotta stop going to the people that I go to for sympathy and go to the people that want to hold the higher or different frequency, right? So life was creating a change of approach and goes, oh yeah, of course you're trying to get sympathy from this person and not change it, right? So life to me was like a huge, that was a huge day in my life. And by the way, I changed it without having to go to the hospital. I undid myself from the need you know, to get sympathy and accidentally, suddenly my neck was totally healed like in an hour. So there's always a better vibration that's that's trying to do its stuff. And we're, we're stuck to our old childhood parents story a lot. And I love meditation because it's, it's offering um, that higher place. And I, and I wanna offer you to meditate today with your body. And what do I mean by that? I think that a lot of times we have stuff that's deep in our body that we're scared to look at. So we actually meditate to, to numb, right? Um, and be okay with the fact that we're not looking at our body, right? Yes, Diego also did have the, you can measure what you'll lose, you can't see what you'll gain quote. Um, and that was a huge deal too. He said that to me. I was like, should I cancel my Facebook? He goes, I don't know, but we know that you can measure what you lose. You can't see what you'll gain. So true, right? So think of that with the meditation today. Let's think about that, right? Like what you're meditating today and it's very easy to see what we're losing, right? Well, I'm just gonna sit for a while and, and I could be watching this or spending time with this friend or going to lunch, right? Yeah, you can measure what you lose, but what if, what if you suddenly hit a receptivity that, that answers something? Or what if you opened up a space to cry out some traumatic event that suddenly no longer serves you? What if, what if it gives you a one second directional switch that opens your heart up and changes your career or helps you to move into a new, relationship or friendship that is more aligned with with your soul what if it what if it accidentally shows you the whole world revolves around you i mean what what if what if you can only measure what you'll lose you know if we do a meditation for a while i can see all the same stuff that i'm used to doing on sunday that doesn't fulfill me maybe but i can't see what i'll gain and what if they're right behind you is some giant frequency that's trying to give you magic, you know? And 
we are always avoiding it to stay in the finite, temporary, scared place, right? That's big to think about. And also, I just want to offer that um, this space is only now. There's no what will your meditation be, really. It's just now. And when you meditate, if you just go, it's just now and not think things like how many more minutes are there, which is a much more finite thought than, than you're just meditating. You're just, you're just, even me your meditating is too much work. You're paying attention to what's real. You're paying attention to all that is. There's no time. There's no such thing as time. Can you handle that? I was listening to Rupert Spira the other day. Um, I really like him. And he was saying, have you ever left the now to go to the past? It's impossible. You might from your mind, but you're still only in the now. But you've never actually literally like gone and revisited the past. Like I can't even, like this morning I took a bath. I can't like suddenly go see me taking a bath why am I telling you that I took a bath? Let me say shower while I was punching the wall. I took a, sh I took a shower punching the wall and just jujitsuing. Can you look at the question mark, don't ask me what I'm done with? What's that? If you look at the only question right now. Lindsay said, if you look at the question, it's about masculine and feminine. Hey, Kyle, I love your stuff. Is there a masculine and feminine energy as well in terms of sexuality and holding spaces for those? Sure. Yeah. And I would love to find those one day. <laughs> All is perfect. All is perfect, right? I think that I think of it this way. Whatever the essence, you, you know, some of us have primarily masculine energies in our body and our core, and some of us have primarily feminine energies. And it's not only down to what your gender is. There's, there's obviously people that have, that are, that are males with a, a very big feminine energy heart, and then the opposite happens, and we don't know. And I find, this is something I've kind of realized, you are going to be what your core is because you're in whatever you're in. <laughs> in other words, by trying to mentally say stuff like I need to be more masculine or I need to be more feminine, um, you're actually compartmentalizing with your mind these energies and blocking you from the core of what your body wants to do, right? Does that make sense? right? Like the core of what your body wants to do, it's just there. So if you are meditating and you're in the actual aspect of what you are, sometimes it'll be more feminine, it'll be more masculine, it'll be whatever it is. But it's a hard thing to do to mentally get to the aspect of what your body actually is. Like it's, it's almost getting in the way of it. Right? Like what if you at one moment would actually have more of a feminine core in your body, but you're trying to get there with your mind. You're trying to get there with your mind, right? I gotta be more feminine. By trying to get there with your mind, which is actually kind of a get there kind of as a masculine energy, right? You could be blocking your essence by trying to get there, right? Um, or maybe you, your core is that you're someone who's on a mission and ready to go. And then you're trying to, with your mind, get to the mission part of your body. So you're, you're feeling, am I there? I'm feeling this thing. So you're actually bringing a false feminine that's in the way of your masculine, right? Like your body's got what it is, right? Your, your core has what it is. And Sometimes we have more of one or the other, or we have a little of both, but the more you're connected to all that is, you don't need to mentally figure out how to be more masculine or be more feminine or, or, you know, like, it's just like, it's all contained, right? It's kind of like when you're trying to figure out um, an idea in your mind versus one just shows up. Do you get, do you get what I mean by that? Have you ever had where a, an idea just pulls you off the couch 
it just screams at you, you have an idea for a blog or you wanna do something that really calls to you. And then there's times you're like trying to come up with an idea. What are we gonna do? And ironically, your mind is blocking you from receiving the idea that's right there. Like imagine if a radio antenna thought its job was to play the music, right? So the antenna's down because it's trying to figure out how to do music. And it's like, well, you're actually a radio, you're a receiver of music, not the music itself to the radio, right? And you're the receiver of your brilliance. You're the receiver of your art. You're the receiver of your receiving of money. You're the receiver of what energy, masculine or feminine, you're supposed to be in in that given moment. You're the receiver of all that. So as we're trying to mentally get to a place that's already there, right? Um, it, like you're, you're here to pick up the music, not create it. Do you get the difference? Like, oh, I gotta do it out of ego. That's not gonna work. You're doing it from a finite energy, right? You, you, you're here to pick it up. So that, that's contained in the meditation, right? And that's, that's what I mean by meditating with the whole body, not only the body, but outside of your body. Can you meditate and hear everything? The oneness of all of this versus the small story trying to meditate. That's what's usually happening. The small story is trying to meditate to protect yourself from the oneness of all that is. I didn't realize how many people did that till I did one-on-ones this year and found people were meditating in a way to block themselves from their body. Do you get what I'm saying? People were meditating in a way to block themselves from the oneness of what's trying to come to them, right? Oh, if I just listen with my mind and, and get to, nah, then I don't have to actually feel the darkness that's in my body. So, so, you know, I can have all these ideas and it's like, actually the ideas are on, the inclusion of the darkness that's in your body, the, the inclusion of your pain about politics right now, the inclusion of what's going on circumstantially, right? That, that, that all includes, all of your fears are a part of it. You know, this space that you're actually in and you actually are is holding space for fear and anger, right? It's, it's holding space for, <laughs> the mission that's coming up it's 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 that's you right so the 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 curse that we've had is is the teaching that we're supposed to stay in this positive free place and not be there for for anger or that you gotta you know that i, I recently made a thing about this or i texted mary an idea and then she made a meme about it but like there's a huge shadow in spiritual seeking that is trying to be in the optimism and see the good in everything and is not holding space for the bad feelings, which are just as good as the things you think are good. Do you know that? Do you know that your anger scene is just as good as you seeing the light side and the synchronicities of certain things? Do you know that Right now, the time is 12.29 p.m. And that isn't necessarily a magical synchronistic number according to our ego, but it is just as synchronistic as 11.1 and 111 and all that. Do you know that? Do you hear that? Do you know that you feeling off is synchronistic? Do you know that you um, not getting it is synchronistic? Do you know that you feeling triggered is, is synchronistic? Do you know that you feeling sad is exactly right? And just as amazing as when the numbers are, you know, that it's, it's 10, 20, 20, 20, you guys like that. That's amazing. And so is, uh, it's, it's 12, 29. Next year is also synchronistic. Do you know when Mercury is retro in retrograde, that's also right. It's where it's supposed to be, just not where our egos have decided it should be. That go, it's out of alignment. Do you know what's going on exactly with the world is exactly right? Right? Do you know that? Do you, do you, can you find the place where that's true?
there's a place in you that you're used to going into that says that's not true, which is also synchronistic. And there's a place you can feel if you listen long enough that says that is right. Right? <clears throat> Do you know when you, you can't remember what you were going to say that's synchronistic? Do you know that when you're embarrassed or shamed, that's synchronistic? <clears throat> do you know when you, you don't understand what to do or you're feeling totally broke, that's synchronistic? Do you know when you're accidentally fixing an issue from your ego, that's right? Can you feel what I'm saying? There's nothing we can say that isn't. Do you know death is synchronistic? Do you know the death of your story is actually required? Do you know that death is just as important as life? And a lot of conditioning through the news and horror movies and stuff have created the illusion that death isn't okay. Do you know that probably one of the biggest causes of suicide is the constant belief you shouldn't be looking at death, the repression of it, that you should feel bad that you have suicidal thoughts or dark thoughts sometimes versus holding a space for those thoughts so they can be accepted and held and loved. Someone just said another question came up that I didn't even see about suicide. Hmm. Maya, sending you so much love. Maya says, I lost a friend to suicide last week and I'm finding it difficult to hold space for my sadness. Do I do this alone? I'm scared to ask for help. <clears throat> sending you so much love, Maya. I want you to first of all, take in how much we don't know about where your friend now is, right? Never, ever, ever, ever would I ever advocate for suicide, but I sure hold space for the thoughts that have to come up sometimes. I mean, think of that. Sometimes we're all going to have thoughts about it. And then what do we do? We shame the thoughts and then we feel like we need to escape from our shame. Like, screw you, I have a right to think about this. The more darkness you accept, the more those thoughts will have to be there, right? So first of all, Maya, I'm so sorry to hear about your friend while holding space for you right now. I'm finding it difficult to hold space for my sadness, Maya says. I want you to take in the idea that you don't hold space for sadness, that space is held for sadness, and that is you. Do you see what I'm saying? The ego trying to seek the space holding is actually the ego that needs to be held. The ego that's trying to hold space for itself. Do you feel that, Maya? The ego is, it's, I'm, I'm seeing a little five-year-old girl trying to hold space for herself. The poor girl. So Maya, I want you to know the space exists and it's being held for her, the one who's seeking to hold the space for herself. So when you said, do you do this alone? I'm gonna ask you this, Maya, are you ever alone? Are you alone? And when we say alone, do we mean just there's not a physical person around us? Or do we mean my ego is so trying to find the space 
that it's creating the illusion that I'm not connected to all that is. It's almost like a little, you're watching a little five-year-old girl trying to create light to see herself while she's in a well-lit room. Like picture a little kid trying to find light to look at themselves in a well-lit room so there's no more light anyway that the kid could bring. You can't hold the space for your sadness. You are held and you're sad. Do you feel that? You are held and you're sad. You are held, everybody feel that. You are held. So how, if you're feeling of an emotion that's coming up, how do you hold space egoically for the ego? <laughs> I gotta be, I'm going to be here for me. And you could just lie down on your bed and go, this bed is here for me. This tree that, I, that I'm walking near is here for me. So then we gotta look at what the you is because it sounds like a pattern is trying to hold space for itself. And we call that pattern I, and that's our pain. That's our pain, and that's also perfect. That was here to teach us this now. I got to hold space for my sadness. Wait a minute. I am always holding space for everything. I am the space for the pattern sadness. Maya, are you there hearing this? Can you can we shoot us a little comment just that lets us know if you're receiving this? And and this is so perfect for today's meditation because we're just realizing that we're held. This space is holding you. And all meditation is, is the receiving of that. Denise says, I feel sadness. Well, good thing you've joined this space today, consciously. Usually we've avoided the space unconsciously, but it's always here. Let's feel some sadness. I mean, is there a you involved at all? Is there a you involved at all, right? There's a space holding sadness and a pattern that's sad. What's Kyle in this? Like, what's the story of Kyle? There's a space that's here to shine the light on every emotion. And then there's a pattern that's feeling the emotion. What's you, what are you in that? Explain to me what the I is in that. There's no I, so there's no you. There's actually no you. Can you, can you grasp what I'm saying, even though there is no you and there's no grasping? You're witnessing all that is. And all that is, is just experiencing itself. There's a space that's shining a light on patterns that exist in the bodies. And then there's a you that thinks that it's your job to shine the light that's in the way of what's happening based on the false belief that that's you. Someone just wrote on the panelists only link, I feel fear, anger, disappointment, and grief. That's great. And know that there's no way that that's you, right? I'm not anger because the anger will go away and you'll still be here. 
really take that in. You know what most of us think what we are is? The part of you sitting on top of your patterns. Do you understand what I mean by that? Like imagine your patterns are like a trap door in the body. And you're the story that you've created that has done everything you could to not fall through the trap door. If I keep this relationship going, then I don't have to look at the patterns of pain under here. If I keep this story going, then I don't have to look under this, right? The feelings of abandonment, the feelings of, of loneliness, the feelings of guilt, whatever, shame. So the, what we've accidentally coined as I is this energy that's dancing around the top of a trap door. But if the trap door falls, you still can witness everything. So you're not, most people think that who they are is the avoidance of those lower feelings. Yeah. So as Jennifer said, identifying with the false self. Now, let me ask you this. Is there a real self? Where do you find the real self? Maya just wrote the panelists feeling a huge amount of release. Congratulations, Maya. And did you have to do anything, Maya, to, to release that? What was the one factor of the release? Your awareness was raised. Your awareness of what's really true was raised. Awareness. Basically, you already are that awareness, but you are becoming aware of the awareness of what you are. And the more in this meditation we're about to do that we just listen the more we become aware of our awareness, of our awareness, of our awareness. And then all you are is just farther and farther levels of awareness, experiencing the illusion of the self. And the farther you go, the more you start looking through God's eyes, you see the perfection in everything, the perfection in what we perceive as loss. By the way, the only way you could ever perceive loss is to think something was yours before that. <clears throat> Take that in for a second. Mine, I lost mine. I lost my money. I lost my house. I lost my, my friend that left me. Feel that for a minute. Think of how much more could come into your life and be experienced from a little bit of the shedding of the illusion of your mind. I own you. Think of how much more vibrationally could show up. Suzanne says, my children, I mean, I, I am a father, I get it. The more I put a my on top of Vivi, I mean, I'm absolutely here for her protection and her, her, you know, of course, that's partly why I'm here. But the more I put mine, the more I can accidentally instill my, you need to be this way on her. The more our parents are like, this is my kid. They're going to be a doctor. They're going to do, that's how, because you're really just an expression of my unlived dreams or my lived dreams. And I need to get love based on what you do. That can happen sometimes for children. I see Vivi much more as God's child, as the universe's child. And she has her own unique expression that could be so different from what 
my story is used to. Right? Yeah. Holding space with you guys. Even that term's stupid. Holding space means I'm paying attention to what's real. I'm paying attention to what's real. While you shed the illusion of what's real. Think about that. I'm paying attention to what's real. Oh, someone's going through something right now. They're stuck in the illusion of what's real. This person left me. This person makes me so mad. I was cut off the other day and then I lost my job and I'm furious, blah, blah, blah. Oh, let me grab on to what's real here. Hey, all that is. I'm gonna just grab you while this person sheds the stuckness that they believe is real because the only way out of your pain is through. Right? So experiencing and feeling through the pain. Right? Is necessary to get to all that is. I mean, how many times have you for sure thought something was a certain way and wrong, then cried and then realized something different, right? You had to experience it. No, no, this is all that's true. It's everything I know. That person screwed me over. They da da da. I blah 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 blah. blah. Wah. I miss my mom. So many people I love are are I, every person I love, <laughs> but so many people I love are hopping on in the chat. I'm so happy to be with you guys. Today. I'm so honored to have the experience of connecting to all that is along with the joy of the illusion of the <laughs> temporary experience of what we're not. I want to offer you for this to release trying. Just let this moment in. Ariel says, what part of me believes that I need to let go or get rid of the pain, anger, etc.? I'm practicing allowing to stay as long as it needs. And that's when it leaves on its own. Ariel, I'm going to offer you take take this in for a minute. Who's asking what part of you is it? And is there any answer that really will help you receive? In other words, the question is in the finite minds area. So the answer will just be an answer that isn't really what we're looking for. Oh, that part of me. Okay, that's the problem. The answer isn't still you getting to receive. So what I wanna offer is the surrender of needing to know what part of you, the surrender of needing to know. Just be here. Just pay attention to what's real. So we're going to do a little meditation by just undoing the idea that there's work in the meditation. How about we have a relaxation? And just don't interrupt it for a minute. No, you don't need to know. Almost every one of those types of questions, I never know the answer to, but I'm okay with it. See, most of us believe we need to know something before we release it. Meanwhile, your body's shown you that's not true. Do you, do you have a rule with yourself that you can't go to the bathroom until you know what you ate last night? What's going to be coming out? No. What's it going to be? No, you find out later. Oh, corn. It was corn, everybody. 
You don't need to know. I can't pee until I know if it was coffee or tea that I had this morning. Then I'll pee and know. Oh, it was asparagus. Brian, if we make a, a video out of today's call, I'd love to have it and write it. Oh, it was asparagus. And that last part makes it too. Join AEP. So it's just a quick note. Let's relax. Allow yourself to feel held by the chair you're sitting in or the bed you're sitting on. Notice as I sit here, how the ego goes, wait, we need, we need content, we need filler. I used to watch a lot of those non-dual teachers and I'd see their videos, it'd be like three hours. And then I'd watch it and realize they said like 17 words and the video started, like their content started 25 minutes into the video. And I, I get it now. That's because the, the vastness of what is, is so much better content. When you hear Eckhart Tolle talk and he, he takes almost a minute between, you know, he'll have huge pauses. Mr. Rogers, huge pauses. Isn't that a weird thing that our biggest heroes Hear the music in the silence too. Hmm. In fact, the silence starts to become louder than the finite content. In fact, it becomes the most fascinating thing. It's the only thing true. This Relax. And know that anything that feels like you're blocking your ability to receive this now is perfect. It's supposed to be doing that. In other words, it's got something under it to release. So even if you're trying to hear the moment and your ego is kicking in, no, 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 it's, it's all right. It, it, it's supposed to not be able to feel connected yet. Because there's something under it. There's something big to be revealed. So let's start allowing ourselves to just slip into this meditation and not think of meditation as anything different than what we've been doing. I just might talk less and less and less so I can hear more and more and more.
Everything that feels negative is a pattern being seen. Everything that feels negative is a pattern being seen. What an experience we're having right now. What's beating your heart? What, what is, what is making the skin cells die on your arms and then like regenerate? What is, what is doing that? It's not a, a answer that any word or your mind could come up with. There's no way you could find the answer to that at a certain level of thinking. It's like a drawing trying to find the paper. you can feel that energy. Beyond words though. Experience the urges that come up and, and not necessarily do them. The patterns of addiction that go, let's text a friend. Let it come up and don't do it. Let's say I'm, I wanna go watch, just let it be there and watch that pattern show up and suddenly not be fed. Today is a new day.
I'm gonna offer you to notice the mind ask that asks any question like, are we starting? Like there's a starting. 